Keith, other than creating a universe in which there is creative freedom, what other characteristics of God would you put under the topic of God's perfection? Well, I can think of three main characteristics. They've been traditionally ascribed to God, though the understanding of them has changed a bit. One is what's traditionally been called power. And I, I'd say that's creative creativity, creative power to do new things. One is consciousness in the sense of complete appreciation and enjoyment of all beautiful things, uh, which is traditionally called simply knowledge. Uh, and the third is community. That, that is to say that God's relational um, um, being. It's that God will uh, share personal being with other finite persons. So love, in other words, is the chief characteristic of relations. So I could put them under creativity, power. consciousness, yeah, power, and consciousness, consciousness okay. knowledge, and love. goodness, or love, or community. positive personal relationship. Now, um, if you say that those are perfections, of course, you get the interesting consequence that to be perfect, God would have to create some other personal beings, if love is indeed a perfection. Um, and that means that, uh, as Thomas Aquinas put it, God's perfection couldn't remain content with being solitary. God's perfection would actually involve its sharing with others. So God didn't have the freedom to remain Solitary. Well, Aquinas wouldn't like you saying that, but uh, he would say it's it's a bit like saying God didn't have the freedom to do what is evil. Um, logically speaking, God had the freedom, but God would have no inclination to do that. So, in one sense, given that God is perfectly good, yeah, it follows from God's nature that that God will create. And the not only the existence of evil, but the extent of evil in the world does not diminish in any sense your feeling that God is perfect? No, it doesn't, uh, for this reason, that I think uh, that if you make a sort of array of all logically possible states of affairs, every logical possibility that could ever exist, then some of these are going to be very evil. And you're not going to be able to eliminate that. They're going to be logically possible states of affairs. <clears throat> now, God this scheme would select some of those states of affairs for existence and uh, of course God would select the best ones for himself if you want to put it that way you might say God would be perfect uh, and God might select other possibilities universes because of the goodness they exhibit it's a bit like the multiverse theory in fact in Augustine it's it's called the principle of plenitude really, that God will create every possible sort of good thing that God can create um, that's part of God's perfection. That's part of God's perfection, yeah. Uh, so if you put it that way, God is going to involve both being perfect, i.e. perfectly beautiful and conscious uh, in, in the divine being, but also God is going to create other beings which have a lesser degree of perfection because they're still good. So perfection will involve the creation of relatively less perfect beings, but still good beings. Okay. And how much of this does God have to do to remain perfect? Well, I don't know everything about God, Robert. I'm not uh, quite sure. But I think uh, you could certainly say God couldn't, would be prevented by the divine nature from creating an evil universe. So there couldn't be a universe of unutterable evil. Which, of course, some people would say there is one. And that, that might be the problem. But on, on this view... Every universe that God created would have to be overwhelmingly good. And there may be multiple creations that God has done, is doing, will do? Yep. Yes, why not? I think Augustine proposed that possibility. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, that's an issue I, that, we, that is, in principle, resolvable, but not by us. I mean, namely the question, is there more than one logically possible world with intelligent beings like us in it? <laughs> Okay. And physicists deal with that question, sure. interestingly, and they disagree among themselves. So I'm happy to leave the disagreement there and say, well, uh, you know, if, uh, if there can be more than one logically possible good world, there probably is. In God's perfection, does that mean that everything God has done or will do always turns out to be the best possible way? 
No. Uh, well, actually, the way you put that is a bit difficult. You said everything that God will do. Um, the difficulty here is you might, on the post-16th century view, say that it, it is better for God to create a universe which, to some extent, makes itself so which is free to develop in different ways. It might include random, an element of randomness, which becomes the basis later on for conscious freedom. Because if you don't have any randomness, you probably couldn't have conscious freedom. So if you accept that argument, um, then of course you can't think of God as doing everything. Though you do have to think of God as allowing everything to be. Uh, so <coughs> does God do what is less than perfect? Well, God allows to be what is less than perfect. He does create, he's responsible. Yeah, God's responsible. But he's not actually doing everything.